hi everyone welcome back to my channel my name is jason matthew in this video i am just trying to uh, show you some of the uh, some of the basic wireless stuffs how this uh, wireless environment works surrounding you and um, there are a lot of misunderstanding on how the wireless works in the background and um, uh, how that actually serving the clients and we don't we don't care about what is happening because it's not visible to us right so uh, what i'm trying to do here is uh, we have a tool called uh, akahu so you, whoever is working in wireless who knows the akahu uh, tool available for doing the predictive survey or uh, physical survey uh, for analyzing your rf this video is nothing related to uh, teaching you about how to use the akahu uh, if you want to learn akahu completely you have to go for the five day boot camp kind of thing then it's not a small uh, thing to learn in five minutes video or 10 minutes video it's a this tool is capable of doing n number of things and you will be uh, required at least uh, four or five days boot camp to get that information with you this tool is used for simulating the access points and finding your uh, uh, the rf design or creating your rf design so I'm going to use that and I'm trying to explain some of the basic stuff that happens on Wi-Fi or the wireless side. So let's uh, start with uh, explaining about this particular setup. So as you can see here, uh, this is, there is a project created on Akahu. Basically, this is just a plain um, floor plan that I created. So I don't want to work on any, any actual floor plan or something. So I thought uh, we will just create a simple one and just showcase you how this one uh, uh, works in the background or the simulation because I'm not concentrating on uh, designing something here. Basically, this floor plan uh, created with around 1000 feet uh, distance, then, uh, then uh, around uh, 550 on the height side. So this is just, just for a reference. You don't have to uh, worry about anything else, uh, scale or anything. So I just created simply one um, rectangle shape so that I can explain the things in the background. Now I have uh, one AP placed in the middle. It's not exactly the middle, but uh, almost middle. So in this particular one, we are going to showcase uh, how this AP is going to behave with different wall types and how that is going to affect your RF in the background. So that's the first thing you have to understand. What is the alternation levels and how this one is going to impact your uh, network uh, in your real time scenarios. So here you will be seeing the simulated way of uh, AP uh, uh, based on the Akahu algorithm runs in the background. So we will uh, get started with that. Okay, so let's see the uh, AP model here. So this is a 3800 AP. So let me just show you that access point here. So this is 3800 AP and uh, I'm using 3800 2.4 plus 5 gigahertz model. Then this AP is uh, ceiling mounted. Then radio one, uh, these are the power levels I configured. As you know, this AP can go up to 23 dBm. This is the maximum you can go on uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz as per the data sheet of uh, 3800. I covered um, covered how to understand the AP capabilities based on the regulatory domain in another video. So if you want to get the right information, you can uh, you can use that. But here I'm setting the maximum available power of this AP just to explain that. Then the height of the ceiling is uh, uh, the mounting ceiling mounting. Uh, I'm going to mount this AP on um, almost eight feet height. Then uh, the antenna type will be pointing down and this is the azimuth value, uh, the, uh, the AP uh, coverage model. Then I have five gigahertz. Five gigahertz is also going with the uh, same uh, DBM. Basically both are sharing the same radio. So no point in changing the height. Uh, because um, it's an internal uh, AP. Then Bluetooth said I'm not setting anything, but uh, yeah, this is the this is the setup for this particular video. Let's uh, go into the actual simulation of it. So now, uh, as you can see here, there is an AP, and I'm going to enable the signal strength of uh, this one. So I'm going to select the signal strength, and as you can see here this particular um, access point is covering that entire area. So you can see this marking, right? 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet, 
and all those things i just use this cable knot for uh, marking these distances so so that you will get an idea how much one ape is actually covering in the simulated um, simulated way and another thing is uh, in this simulation i am actually setting the boundary as uh, 67 and uh, as you can see here this guy is already covering everything inside uh, minus 67 so this is the signal strength uh, required for uh, uh, for our um, voice related fonts and all these minimum requirement you need and this ap is uh, so without having any disturbance any any kind of uh, attenuation on your area one ap is able to cover almost a thousand feet area so we don't have anything that uh, distracts this wi-fi signal okay so i hope uh, you understand the uh, setup here now let's start introducing uh, walls into the system then let's see how this guy is going to behave with the wall types so for that uh, akahu allows to uh, set the attenuation levels based on the wall type so by default um, by default in most of the new buildings it will come with the drywall so as you can see here drywall is selected here and the drywall settings are like this you have uh, 3 dBm lows and uh, this is the height you are having and all those things. Now I'm going to introduce a drywall into this particular setup and show you what is the difference going to be made by that wall getting into, introduced to uh, this particular setup. So I'm going to draw one line here, then click. So you can see here one line got introduced here. So this is the, um, drywall one line so let me just complete this okay so now i'm done with that wall and you can see that coverage got reduced further right so i introduce a 3 db wall and uh, that changes a lot of things now uh, let's see the uh, what happens to uh, this particular uh, ap when i change this wall type into a different one so i'm going to change this wall type into different wall then i'll just set it as a brick wall if you are working on um, these kind of things in a uh, in an old building or something most probably old buildings will be constructed using a brick wall so I, i'm taking that example here so the gypsum board uh, kind of uh, a drywall kind of thing that got changed into a uh, brick wall and that changes everything so as you can see here the signal strength is uh, reduced further now the same wall i can go further uh, then i can change into change into concrete and that will reduce further so based on uh, your requirement it changes uh, changes in the background so you have to understand what you are dealing with when you are uh, putting that um, access point in one place so that's why uh, the survey uh, whatever you, are, you have to do the predictive survey or it can be a physical survey on that site this is the key thing you have to do when you are doing an rf design uh, when you are working with the drywall one of the thing you have to keep it in mind is your pillar so you will have a concrete pillars inside your building most of the time you will just ignore that when you are doing the planning so you will just say okay i have a room uh, but uh, most of the time these pillars will be hidden uh, in some areas it will be hidden some areas it will be visible if you have a pillar you know, that pillar will be uh, very big and most of the time nothing will pass through that pillar you will have this pillar in this corner I, i'm just uh, setting an example uh, this is not the uh, real scenario Okay, so just uh, imagine uh, this AP is sitting in a room and you have four pillars and uh, this is what going to happen. So once you cross that pillar, nothing is going through. Uh, even if you don't have this wall, I'm going to uh, delete this wall. I deleted all the walls, but still you can see that there is a big gap uh, going through when you have those pillars. So you have to be very careful when you are uh, working with your floor plan and you have to make sure you are when you are doing the predictive survey you have to choose that okay you have uh, you have the right pillars and right wall types uh, set on your uh, floor plan 
so one pillar can change everything so it can be iron bar it can be a uh, normal uh, concrete pillar it can be a brick wall in between uh, your uh, dry wall so whatever it is small small things you have to uh, keep that in mind when you are doing the planning the next thing that we normally miss uh, is our uh, doors so i put dry wall here but i put a placeholder in between and this placeholder i'm going to change into door and this door you have multiple options here so you have interior office that will have only 4 db lows and you have solid wood that will have 6 db lows and you have uh, a steel fire exit kind of thing and that again have uh, 13 db lows so i'm going to put the basic one interior door and uh, you can see this is having only 4 db lows and not not much impact because you can see this value before and after right so i place my mouse pointer before the door and you can see the rssi value um, on 5 gigahertz so okay this, uh, this is actually showing uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz let me just put only 5 gigahertz for better representation okay so yeah this changes a lot because when you have 2.4 it's too powerful and it covers a lot of stuff so uh, i put only 5 gigahertz let's see how this uh, works in the background okay as you can see here you have uh, 47 just before the door and after the door you have 54 so there is a big loss happen so we set the value as 4 db and that loss happened there now we are going to change this door type into a solid wood that changes further you can see this decrease on this uh, this angle on this door and uh, in some place places uh, if you have a storeroom or something and if you want to uh, restrict the fire getting into that side then it can be a steel door also when you put a steel door nothing is passing through so you have to consider each and every time when you are planning your rf you have to consider do you have a door or not then even if you are doing a survey after like it's a passive survey or something you have to make sure you are actually closing the door when you are doing the survey on the other side because same thing if i am not closing basically i'm deleting this one that means your door is open with door open you will get full signal when you close the door you lose that door uh, attenuation right so you have to keep that in mind when you are doing the planning and the survey after the implementation now i i cleared it again uh, but uh, this time i'm going to stick with 5 gigahertz only so uh, these are the door types then uh, the other uh, major issue that going to come uh, is uh, when you are drawing the wall you will just simply ignore what are the extra layers going to come here so i just put one drywall when we say uh, drywall uh, it's not a big deal because it's only having 3 db lows but the problem is most of the time this 3 db will not be the accurate value for you sometimes like at least on one wall you will have a writing board and most of the time it will be a glass so i'm going to add a thick wall, uh, thick glass because it will be a tempered glass and i'm going to add that extra layer so this is the second layer i'm going to add in and you can see there is a another set of laws happen here that um, extra layer uh, can be a glass uh, a tempered glass for um, writings and everything or it can be a tv or it can be a uh, collaboration uh, device or something but whatever it is you will have that uh, covered um, side of it if it's a writing pad it will be a full length uh, uh, glass or a metal piece but it can be a small tv also so i'm going to add uh, one more small tv here so again i'm going to add the glass here so that also impacts it so you have to consider these multiple layers of your wall when you are uh, considering the ap po uh, positioning and in one of the plays um, what i experience is uh, you have a glass wall and we gone there and we did the site visit and we came to know that okay this is not a normal glass partition because uh, this is a, basically it's a uh, each and every room is a uh, audio privacy room and all these rooms will have a uh, two layer glass and uh, it will be uh, vacuum inside so that nothing will pass through so 
that is one of the uh, example for wrong planning when you are doing the planning we will just consider uh, as part of autocad file it says that okay it's just a um, just a glass partition okay let's draw one line that is not sufficient in this kind of scenario so that's why we always recommend to have a site visit when you are doing the planning if you are getting access to a Kahoot tool uh, please play around with the wall types and uh, learn about it the next thing you have to keep it in mind when you are doing the rf plan uh, planning the attenuation area uh, it can be outdoor it can be a warehouse it can be anything else because in those kind of sections you will not be seeing any uh, separate walls or something so there is no permanent wall or dry wall or something like that in that case um, uh, you have these many options here so i'll just take uh, one example of warehouse uh, warehouse rack so this is how you do uh, warehouse planning so i'm going to put a warehouse um, uh, planning so i have two racks here and you can see nothing is passing through those racks because once is uh, rack is completely full nothing will go through that the same rack if it's empty the um, the coverage will be different with items in the rack it will be different so you have to consider uh, this one in your uh, planning when i uh, talk about a kahu uh, the biggest advantage of a kahu is without having the real deployment you can see a simulated way and you can get that um, look and feel of your ap coverage on uh, each site so the next available option in uh, akahu is uh, using a free form uh, lines you can you can just simply draw the line however or whatever you want to do it in this one so basically it will just simulate whatever values you are inputting into the tool the point i want to mention here is you will have an ap AP capabilities are not going to change, but the all other other items in your surroundings, right? It will keep impacting on your Wi-Fi, and that changes your entire uh, entire wireless performance in your network. So I given a lot of examples now, uh, different wall types, multiple layers, and you have n number of combinations. It will keep changing side by side, floor by floor. It can be anything, any 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 combination on your network but you should know how this is going to impact your wi-fi that's the only thing i want to showcase in this particular video i'll keep posting uh, similar kind of videos i have some other uh, scenarios i want to cover and uh, uh, see you in the next video thank you for watching